So CM Punk comes out in Chicago, and he cuts his promo, and he's in a mood. He says, my elbow's not great, but people ask me what I want to do. Are you going to host WrestleMania? He says, you know, 10 years ago, if you'd asked me to host Mania, I'd have thought it was beneath me. But I want to perform in front of you people, and I wish WrestleMania was in Chicago, hint, hint. He says, you know, do they want a referee? Perhaps there's a match that could use an impartial referee. And then he says, that, that that didn't turn out to be something smart. He to shouldn't say. have said that. No. A lot of people talk about me. He says, Pat McAfee, you had Roman Reigns on the show, and you know I'm climbing the mountain when I come back, and he may be on the way down. We might meet. Seth likes to talk to me as well. He wears high heels. He's by, taller by way, than me he, now. By the way, he did a um, he did a plug for a cornet show. He did. Yeah. Says uh, he's earned the right to talk about my injury. Maybe maybe he shouldn't talk him. He has two bad knees. The Rock won't even talk about me. But 10 years ago, we came face-to-face. He realized his arms were too short to box with God. Did, 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 is that what happened? I don't think that's what happened, but that, that was the story. No, I, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I seem to remember that, that, uh, that he didn't beat The Rock. And then he called out Drew. And Drew came out, and man, these guys were like fighting to get a word in. Yeah. Punk says, turn that stupid song off. And he says, I'm not medically cleared, but get your bitch ass in this ring. And Drew says, I'd get in that ring and beat your ass, but I think you forgot what happened the last time we were in the ring together. I stomped that little arm for you because you deserved it. I prayed it would happen. He shows his shirt that has CM Punk. And Punk goes, I never had to put someone else's name on my shirt to sell it. And Drew says, man, you talk about straight edge, but you don't drink or do drugs, but somehow you spend all your time in rehab. That was a pretty good line. And Punk says, come on, people, boo this man. And he's, Drew says, when I'm in the gym, I can't get that last rep. I'm using weights you can't even imagine in your prime. I think of you and that weight goes up. You're my muse, he says. And Punk goes, why don't you get in the ring and talk into my good ear? Because Drew's got hearing issues. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody caught that one. And Drew says, you may have a weapon in there. I'm not going to go in there and have you take me out before Mania. So finally, he says, you know, I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's basically like, because you're from Chicago. He says, I know you want to be at Mania so bad. Well, you don't have to sneak in. How about you? uh, I want you to be at a front row seat so you can uh, think of what it would be like if you were in my position. I have always been the chosen one, he says. And Punk says, oh, yeah? Who chose you? Say the guy's name. Who chose you? What paragon of good virtue chose you? That, That was actually pretty pretty dancing pretty close you know and Drew Be- because says, uh because they have not mentioned that that man no they have not in in a while and um yeah it was uh it was interesting and drew says keep going get it in while you can you're gonna be out for months all you're good at is talking why don't you be the commentator for my match so then seth's music hits and he comes out and he says this is my show punk says that's fine it's my city and Seth says, well, you know, you guys are trying to make decisions, but uh, you're not even asking the opinion of the champ. So, uh, fans, what do you think? Uh, should this guy do commentary for the match? And they kind of cheer, but then they start chanting for they referee. Didn't che- they didn't cheer much. I know, because they wanted him to be the referee. Yeah. So they start chanting referee, and Seth says, I don't know if you people know this or not, but, you know, that bad one's his counting arm. So, of course, Punk drops down, and he starts counting with his other arm. With his left I'm arm, sure yeah. that didn't help. And yeah, so, that, Yeah, that... that, that whatever yeah so finally i think he starts to realize they really want me to be the ref shit so he says well you know i don't think i could be objectively fair with these two dipshits <laughs> and drew says pg brother and so seth says you know i don't think anything about you you haven't crossed my mind since the last time we were in the ring together i don't give a damn about you i don't care if you're on commentary a referee it doesn't matter funny thing is you talk about everyone needing you but the fact is you need me to have a moment at WrestleMania. And so I want you on commentary so you can narrate my finest hour. The irony has not been lost on me, and uh, that'll be about as close to a world title as you're ever going to get. And so Punk says, fine, it's decided. I'll do commentary at WrestleMania, and I guarantee I'm going to do something my 10-year absence from this company could never do, and that's make you two interesting. So they hit his music, and then Drew says, no, he is not getting the last word. He says, I'm obsessed with the title. Punk, you're obsessed with me. You watch me on social media. Watch me on TV. I'm living your dream. And suddenly Seth lays him out with super kick, hits him with a curb stomp. And my God, that segment was so long. 
bordering on out of control. It was like that train almost left the tracks, but <laughs> it never did. Yeah. But it was... It was interesting. It was an interesting thing. It was immensely compelling. Well, the one thing about the one thing about it was is that um, you know WWE is, is, is so scripted, and even though this was scripted, it did feel like it was loosely scripted. I would say. I, I mean, it, it felt like that there were things in here that were like like when Punk went down to count and when the fans chanted referee. There's, I think, there was more impromptu than than, than usual. Well, it had to be because this thing went way long yeah. because they there were no entrances for the next two matches. Right. The next match was, was Ivy and Candice. It went maybe two minutes. It went just under two minutes. Just They they literally came back from break. They were wrestling, and uh, Candice kept wanting Indy to interfere, but Indy refused to do it. And then Candice faked a knee injury, swept Ivy's legs, pinned her using the ropes. Because of the amount of time that got cut, they made poor Ivy look like a geek. And, uh, and yeah, just boom, boom, boom. And then DIY and New Day. I mean, the match started again in the ring, no entrances. And uh, Judgment Day hits the ring, attacks both teams for the DQ. And then Miz and Truth had been on commentary. So Miz tries to make the save. He gets beaten down. Then Truth runs in. He tries to make the save. He gets beaten down. And uh, as soon as Finn gave him the double foot stomp, boom, they're out of there to the next segment. They had a lot of time to catch up on here. We had a Gunther promo about Sammy, and he said that uh, I don't think Sammy can beat Bronson tonight. And so he was asked, are you going to be out there scouting? And he said, don't think Sammy can beat Bronson tonight. We had Andrade beating Giovanni Vinci. Uh, originally, originally supposed to be Ivar, but Ivar was not medically cleared today. Yeah. But it's not it's not supposed to be serious, I guess. Vinci uh, beat him with the... Uh, same move um, Angelo Dawkins used in all of his matches. The underhook into the twisting neckbreaker. Yeah. That's now his finish. And then we had Rhea. Andrade, Andrade would not. Uh, Andrade, you know. yeah. Yeah. So then uh, out came Rhea and Dom, and Becky interrupted. And Becky did this great promo where she's talking about how, you know, you said you'd never attack me, you respect me, but I can't even attack you. You never even wrestle on this show. And Rhea said, all I have to do is post on the internet. That's it. Becky says, yeah, well, we have two interpretations of what a champion does. You post your ass on the Internet. I bust my ass every night to prove myself. And Rhea ends up saying, you know, you're like a cockroach, hard to kill, not impossible. But she says, I'm not going to kill you at WrestleMania. I want to leave you alive so you can sit next to your daughter on the couch and listen to her call me mommy. And so then Becky gets all pissed off, and she says, that's your one pass. You ever mention my daughter again, it'll be the last words you ever say. That's not funny to me, she says. My dad never got to meet my daughter. I know he was proud of everything I've done in the ring. I know he'd be most proud of me and the mother that I have become. And she's in tears. And she says, that might be a joke to you. It's not a joke to me. And you say you didn't attack me out of respect. There's nothing respectful about you. And after Mania, neither of us are ever going to be the same again. So Dominic gets in her face. And... uh I didn't catch it the first time, but later oh, they be showed a slow motion replay. Oh yeah, Becky punched her right in the face. She fucking punched Dom. I mean, you see his face just go like those slow motion replays on UFC. She decked this dude. And he went down. I have no idea how she didn't crack. She hit him so hard. And then there was a brawl. Officials came down to break it up and that was that. So we had a couple of segments with Sammy and Chad. They, they, they also made a lot of references to the thing in um, Rockford where, uh, um, what was it, uh, Rhea Ripley was going to give uh, Shayna Baszler the stink face. She was going to give it to Nia Jax, and Shayna Baszler wanted it and sat in the corner and went for it. And then she's about to do it to Shayna, who's wanting it, and then Nia attacked um, Rhea Ripley, and Nia squashed Shayna. So, there you go. So, Sammy ran into Chad Gable again, and Chad's trying to tell him, this Gunther, it's about mind games. Like, you got to concentrate on Bronson tonight. Do not take your, your focus off Bronson. So, it's Sammy and Bronson, and a good match, and out comes Gunther in the aisle. Sammy goes for the kick, but he gets distracted. Bronson kills him with Lariat, sent on, hits the tsunami, and pins him. Mm -hmm. And so, the story... Is it Gunther's in Sammy's head, 
And we also have a challenger for Sammy after he beats Gunther, yep. which would be uh, Bronson Reed. Yep. So uh, later there's a, a meeting again with uh, Sammy and Chad, and Chad says, you know, I told you, you're one of the best I've ever been in the ring with, but with Gunther, it's mental. And if you want to get to the other side of Mini with your hand raised, you need another approach. And if you want another approach, we can talk. So apparently Chad's going to train uh, Sammy for Mania. Something along those lines, yeah. Which, unless he turns heel, I mean... Which could happen. I guess it could happen, but... I mean, I guess I guess Gunther could win if Chad turns on Sammy. Yes. But I kind of felt like this was Sammy's, like... I, I, I think that it's time for Sammy to win because, yeah. it's, you know, Gunther's had it for two years. So we had Jay versus Nakamura, and we only got about two minutes, minutes of action. They go to commercial. They come back for the angle, which is... Uh, Solo and Jimmy come through the crowd. Seth and Cody hit ringside to make the save. Drew runs down, kills Seth with the future shock. And then Jay hits a super kick and a spear, and he uh, pins Shinsuke. So then they do the angle. They cut backstage. Cody and Jimmy are brawling. Cody sends Jimmy outside. He's working over Solo. And suddenly The Rock shows up, and he beat the shit out of Cody. And he's beating him all over the place backstage. He threw a trash can at his face. He took this big toolbox and he threw it on Cody. And this big metal tool of some sort landed right on Cody's knee. And Cody grabbed that knee. And I was like, oh, my God. Do not get hurt before Mania. And The Rock beats him outside. It's pouring down rain. And Rock says, if you thought for one second that The Rock was going to let Cody talk shit, not by a long shot. And he says, Mama Rhodes, at the end of the day, it didn't have to be like this. But Cody stuck his nose in my business. The prophecy has come true. So, by the way, if you uh, still don't know what The Rock said when he whispered to Cody, his exact words were, tonight, I'm going to make you bleed. And, in fact, he made him bleed. He busted him him open. They were brawling, like, outside, and there was, like, this big drop-off, like, down to the parking lot. And I was like, oh, my God. I thought he was going to throw him over. I did, too. I was like, I don't I mean, throw I mean, I Cody it, off this I, building. I, I, I thought I thought it would be gimmick, so it was, it was safe, but I thought he was going to throw him over. Yeah, but you know what? Even though it's always gimmick and it's safe, it's like whenever you're watching something that's like a serious angle, as soon as they throw him off a fucking building, it's yeah, like, I, come you, on. You, now it's hokey wrestling. Yeah, I mean, this was wrestling, but he just beat him bloody, and he cut a promo on his mother. And he says, your daddy talked about hard times. He don't know anything about hard times, but you're going to know about hard times. He says, Cody Rhodes, hard times. This is what happens when you fuck with the final boss. And he they says. Did, they, did, they did bleep all that out. They did, but that's what he said. You could read oh, yeah. his lips. Oh, he definitely said that. He says, Mama Rhodes, it didn't have to be this way, but this is the way it's going to be. The show goes off the air. Rock's there with this weight belt. Cody's bleeding all over in the pouring rain. His shirt's been torn off. This angle was incredible. Oh, I yeah. mean, it was great. So, uh, yeah. They're doing a hell of a job building up this mania. Hell of a job. Yeah, well, they've got, they got the horses that know what they're doing. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.